Hello and welcome. Today we're diving deep into the true meaning of selflessness. It's a word we hear often, but what does it truly mean to live a selfless life? How do we cultivate this quality within ourselves and let it radiate outwards, touching the lives of others? Over the next few moments, we'll embark on a journey of self-discovery, exploring the very essence of selflessness. We'll uncover the beauty of putting others first, of extending a hand without expecting anything in return. This isn't about diminishing ourselves, it's about enriching our lives and the lives of those around us through acts of genuine care and compassion. We'll explore eight main attributes of selflessness, provide examples, and discuss how to handle each situation. Get ready to unlock a new level of understanding about yourself and the power of selflessness. Let's begin. Empathy. It's the ability to step outside ourselves and truly understand what another person is going through. It's about feeling their joy, their pain, their struggles as if they were our own. Have you ever had a friend share a story that brought tears to your eyes even though you weren't there? That's empathy at work. It's about listening with your heart, not just your ears. It's about silencing your own thoughts and judgments and allowing yourself to connect with another soul on a deeper level. Empathy is the foundation of selflessness because it allows us to see the needs of others as clearly as we see our own. Imagine a single mother working two jobs to make ends meet. She's exhausted, overwhelmed, and feels utterly alone. Now imagine a friend or a neighbor recognizing her struggle, offering a helping hand, maybe watching the kids for an evening so she can catch her breath. That's empathy in action. It's not about solving everyone's problems or taking on their burdens as our own. It's about showing up with an open heart, a listening ear, and a willingness to understand. It's about saying, I see you, I hear you, and I'm here for you. Empathy is a muscle, and like any muscle, it needs to be exercised. The more we practice stepping into the shoes of others, the more natural it becomes. And as we cultivate empathy, we open ourselves up to a world of connection, compassion, and true selflessness. Altruism is the act of putting the needs of others before our own, even when it requires sacrifice. It's about extending a hand, not because we expect something in return, but because it's the right thing to do. It's about recognizing that we are all connected and that our actions have a ripple effect on the world around us. Think of the volunteer who spends countless hours at a local soup kitchen, serving meals with a smile. They're not doing it for recognition or reward. They're driven by a deep-seated desire to make a difference in the lives of others. That's altruism in its purest form. It's about recognizing that true fulfillment comes not from what we take, but from what we give. It's about understanding that even small acts of kindness can have a profound impact on the lives of others. Imagine a young person witnessing an act of bullying. They could easily turn away, but instead, they choose to step in, to stand up for the person being bullied. That takes courage, that takes empathy, and that's a perfect example of altruism. Altruism isn't about grand gestures or becoming a superhero overnight. It's about the everyday choices we make, the small acts of kindness we extend to others. It's about choosing to be a source of light and love in a world that desperately needs it. Humility often gets misunderstood. It's not about thinking less of ourselves. It's about thinking of ourselves less. It's about recognizing that we are not the center of the universe, that our needs and desires are not more important than anyone else's. It's about letting go of the need to be right, to be recognized, to be praised. It's about approaching the world with an open mind and a willingness to learn from others. It's about understanding that everyone has something valuable to offer, regardless of their background, their beliefs, or their station in life. Imagine a CEO who treats the janitor with the same respect and dignity as they treat their top executives. That's humility. It's about recognizing the inherent worth and dignity of every human being, regardless of their position or title. Humility allows us to see the world through a clearer lens. It allows us to connect with others on a deeper level because we're not blinded by our own ego or self-importance. It allows us to approach situations with grace and understanding even when we're faced with challenges or disagreements. It's about recognizing that we don't have all the answers, that we can learn something from everyone we meet. It's about being open to feedback, to criticism, and even to failure. Because it's in those moments of vulnerability that we truly grow and evolve as human beings. Generosity. 
The gift that keeps on giving generosity isn't just about giving material possessions. It's about giving of ourselves. It's about sharing our time, our talents, our resources, and our love freely and without expectation of anything in return. It's about recognizing that the more we give, the more we receive. Think about the friend who always seems to have time for you no matter how busy their life gets. They're there to lend a listening ear, offer words of encouragement, or simply share a laugh. That's generosity of spirit. It's about understanding that true wealth isn't measured by what we possess, but by what we give away. It's about recognizing that the world is abundant and that there's always enough to go around when we approach life with an open heart. Imagine a musician sharing their gift of music with the world, performing for free at a local hospital or nursing home. They're not doing it for money or fame. They're doing it to bring joy to others, to share their passion, to make a difference. That's generosity in action. Generosity is contagious. When we give freely, it inspires others to do the same. It creates a ripple effect of kindness and compassion that spreads outwards, touching the lives of countless people. Patience, the art of gentle understanding. Patience is a virtue, and like any virtue, it requires practice. It's about remaining calm and understanding in the face of challenges, delays, or frustrations. It's about recognizing that not everyone moves at our pace, and that's okay. Think about the parent teaching their child to ride a bike. There will be falls, there will be tears, and there will be moments of frustration. But through it all, the parent remains patient, offering encouragement and support every step of the way. That's patience in action. It's about recognizing that growth takes time, that healing takes time, and that sometimes the greatest lessons are learned through the challenges we face. It's about extending grace to ourselves and to others, understanding that we're all works in progress, Imagine being stuck in traffic, late for an important meeting. It's easy to get frustrated, to honk the horn, to let the stress get the best of us. But patience allows us to take a deep breath, to accept the situation, and to maybe even find a moment of peace in the midst of the chaos. Patience is a gift we give to ourselves and to others. It allows us to navigate the ups and downs of life with grace and understanding, knowing that even in the midst of challenges, there's always something to be grateful for. Forgiveness, releasing the weight of resentment, forgiveness. It's a powerful word and it's often misunderstood. It's not about condoning someone else's actions or pretending that what they did was okay. It's about releasing the grip that anger, resentment and bitterness have on our hearts. Think about a time when you were hurt by someone. Maybe it was a betrayal, a broken promise or a harsh word spoken in anger. Holding on to that hurt, replaying the scenario in your mind, it only keeps you tethered to the pain Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. It's about recognizing that holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. It's about choosing to let go of the past, to release the weight of resentment, and to move forward with a lighter heart. Imagine two friends who had a falling out. It might be easier to hold on to the anger, to nurse the wounds of the past, but true forgiveness allows them to have that difficult conversation, to acknowledge the hurt, and to find a way to move forward together. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting. It doesn't mean condoning. It simply means choosing to release the negative emotions that are holding you back. It's about understanding that everyone makes mistakes and that sometimes the greatest act of love we can offer is the gift of forgiveness. Compassion, the language of the soul. Compassion is a deep understanding and empathy for the suffering of others, coupled with a sincere desire to alleviate their pain. It's about recognizing that everyone is fighting a battle we know nothing about and approaching each other with kindness, understanding, and love. Think about the doctor who treats their patients not just with medical expertise, but with empathy and compassion, taking the time to listen, to understand their fears, and to offer words of comfort and encouragement. That's compassion in action. It's about recognizing that everyone is on their own unique journey, and that sometimes, the greatest gift we can offer is simply our presence, our love, and our understanding. It's about being a source of light in the darkness, offering a helping hand to those who are struggling. Imagine witnessing someone experiencing homelessness. It's easy to look away, to judge, to make assumptions. But compassion allows us to see the human being behind the circumstance, to offer a kind word, a warm meal, or simply a moment of human connection. Compassion is the language of the soul. 
It's a universal language that transcends words, cultures, and beliefs. It's a language that speaks to the very core of who we are, reminding us that we are all connected and that we all have the power to make a difference in the lives of others. Kindness, small acts, big impact. Kindness is often seen as a simple act, but its impact can be profound. It's about treating others with respect, empathy, and consideration, regardless of their background, beliefs, or circumstances. It's about recognizing that everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. Think about the barista who greets you with a warm smile and a friendly word every morning. It might seem like a small gesture, but it can brighten your day and set a positive tone for the hours ahead. That's kindness in action. It's about understanding that even the smallest acts of kindness can have a ripple effect, spreading outwards and touching the lives of countless people. It's about choosing to be a source of light and love in the world, brightening the lives of those around us. Imagine seeing someone struggling to carry heavy bags, offering to help, holding a door open, or simply offering a kind word can make a world of difference. These small acts of kindness might seem insignificant, but they can have a profound impact on the recipient. Kindness is a choice we make every single day. It's about choosing to see the good in others, to offer a helping hand, and to treat everyone with the same level of respect and compassion that we would want for ourselves. As we conclude our exploration of selflessness, I encourage you to reflect on these eight attributes and how they resonate with you, which ones come naturally, and which ones require a bit more practice. Remember, selflessness is not a destination. It's a lifelong journey of growth, compassion, and connection. Share your thoughts on selflessness in the comments below and let us know what actions you will take first. How will you choose to incorporate these principles into your daily life? How will you inspire others to do the same? Don't forget to subscribe as we continue our series on self-confidence. Until next time, remember, the world needs your light. Shine brightly.